The Scarlet Monastery is located in the northern parts of Tearsfall Glades. At the release of the game, it was separated into four low-level dungeons known as the Graveyard, Library, Armory and Cathedral. However, with the release of Mists of Pandaria, the dungeons were revamped and given a heroic difficulty. As a result of the revamp, today we only have two Scarlet Monastery dungeons, but many of us still remember the original four as the real or the better ones. However, there used to exist an even earlier version of the Scarlet Monastery in the game files. So in this video, we are going to go back and look at how this place have changed from before vanilla up until today. Enjoy! It's impossible to say just how early in the game's development that Scarlet Monastery first appeared, but we can say for certain that it was planned very early on. This map is taken from the WoW documentary Looking for Group. This shows such an early stage of the game that the Dragon Isles can still be found off the coast of Tirisfall, and as you can see, the monastery is marked on the map as a level 20 to 27 instance. Now, the pre-vanilla version of Scarlet Monastery that I mentioned earlier could be found on a map file simply called just Monastery. And it wasn't four dungeons either, it was just one. So it's quite possible that the monastery map we are going to look at now is in fact how it looked during the time of that screenshot. So you might have heard about this old Scarlet Monastery dungeon where all the four original wings were put together into one. And that is partially true. While you won't find everything from the four wings, there are elements from each and every one in this instance. You will find the Chamber of Atonement from the original graveyard, the Huntsman's Cloister and an early gallery of treasures from the library, the Hall of Champions from the Armory, and of course the Crusader's Chapel from the Cathedral Dungeon. And the first notable thing is that the pre-vanilla monastery actually begins in the stairway leading up to the entrance hall. As you know, on live servers, that is where you go to actually choose between the different instance portals. And none of the dungeons we have ever gotten to play in have this hall included. The area itself looks pretty much as we expected to. In fact, the only significant change we will see comes when we arrive at the instance portals, or where we would expect to find them. Here, the side portals that would originally take us to the graveyard and the library are missing, and instead we find generic statues. The other two doors, that are locked now on live servers, but used to lead to the armory and cathedral, takes us further into this unused dungeon. If you head through those doors, the first area you will see is the Huntsman's Cloister. Looking back at the vanilla equivalent of this area, it looks practically identical, and even comparing to the Mists of Pandaria revamp, it's still very similar. If we continue through the dungeon, we will arrive at the Hall of Champions next. So in other words, we go from a library area to an armory area. And as you can see, we are entering the place a bit different from what we are used to. Instead of approaching the room from the top of the stairways and making our way down, we actually arrive at the bottom and have to make our way up. Other than that, the Hall of Champions is still very similar to what we are used to, but next time you run the dungeon, take an extra look behind the boss and you can almost see where this passageway was supposed to be. After the Hall of Champions, we arrive at an intersection where we can choose to go left or right. Choosing the left door will take us to the Chamber of Atonement, which we will later find in the original Graveyard instance. In the version we know, passing through here takes us to the Honor's Tomb, but in this version we will end up in a small area almost identical to the Huntsman's Cloister. Taking the right door in the intersection will instead lead us to an early version of the Gallery of Treasures seen in the library instance. The layout of the area is the same, but as you can see, this version has bookcases instead of paintings. And just past this area is a small hallway which leads us directly to the Crusader's Chapel. So to summarize this, 
before the Scarlet Monastery became the four dungeons that we knew from Vanilla and all the way to Cataclysm. It was actually one big instance. And even though everything from the four dungeons wasn't contained in this version, it did have assets from each and every one. But for some reason, Blizzard decided to take this dungeon, chop it up in four pieces and expand each and every one of them. And so we have arrived at the Vanilla versions. So the first original Scarlet Monastery dungeon was the Graveyard, which was targeted to level 26 to 36 characters. In this dungeon you go through the Chamber of Atonement, to the Forlorn Cloister and down the Honor's Tomb. And here you used to encounter two mandatory bosses and a few possible rare spawns. The first boss, James Vicious, could be found in the Chamber of Atonement. I'll rip the secrets from your flesh! As you can see, the chamber is kept almost exactly as it was in the alpha version and passing through it will take us to the graveyard. In the graveyard, the three rare spawns Ashir the Sleepless, Fallen Champion and Iron Spine could be found. And also, during the Hollow's End, this was where you fought the Headless Horseman. In the revamped version, you fight Thalnos up here on the surface, but the original graveyard required you to go down into a crypt and fight him there. No rest for the angry dead. The second dungeon, the library, was targeted to level 29 to 39 characters. It's a lot bigger than a graveyard and starts with the Huntsman's Cloister. As I said earlier, this is basically identical with the alpha version and this is where you will encounter the original Houndmaster, Loxy. Release the hounds! The next area of the library was the Gallery of Treasures, and as you can see, it's a refurnished area of the Alpha Hallway. However, while this was all there was to it in the Alpha version, the Vanilla Library extended to the Athenaeum and a boss room, where you encountered the second boss of the library, Arcanist Doan. You will not defile these mysteries. Burn in righteous fire! Defeating Arcanist Doan from the library allowed one person in the group to loot the Scarlet Key. With this, you could enter the other two dungeons. The armory was intended for level 32 to 42 players, and while it was one of the bigger Scarlet Monastery dungeons, it only had one real boss. The Hall of Champions is also the only asset in here that we can recognize from the Alpha version. That means that the Training Grounds, the Footman's Armory and the Crusader's Armory were all created as they extended these dungeons. In retrospect, the Armory was basically a very long corridor with tons and tons of trash mobs that led up to one single boss in the Hall of Champions. And not only was the door leading into this dungeon locked, but the final door leading into the boss room was locked as well. So if it would happen that the one person having the Scarlet Key left before the instance was done, you risked having had to come all this way just to be locked out the last door. But if you had the Scarlet Key with you, you could go through the final door into the Hall of Champions and fight Herod, the only boss of the armory. Ah, I've been waiting for a real challenge. Light, give me strength! And so, the last dungeon of the original four was the Cathedral. Compared to the library or armory, this was a very short instance, and after you pass through a very short hallway, you arrive at the Cathedral Courtyard. There isn't any boss encounters until you enter the chapel, and inside is a very similar encounter to the one we have in the revamped version. However, in the original Cathedral, we fought Scarlet Commander Morgrain and High Inquisitor Whitemane. High Inquisitor Fairbanks was also a hidden boss. This dungeon is also very special, because it used to contain an event so unique there has never been anything like it in the game since. I am of course talking about the Corrupted Ashbringer event that allowed players carrying the blade to witness a fantastic piece of the game's lore. I recently covered it in a video about the Ashbringer, so if you are interested I will link the video so you can check it out. Infidels. They must be purified! Mograine has fallen? You shall pay for this treachery! Arise, my champion.
The Mist of Pandaria revamp combined the armory and library into the Scarlet Halls, and the graveyard and cathedral was combined into the Scarlet Monastery. The Scarlet Halls now take you from the training grounds, an asset from the armory, into the Huntsman's Cloister from the library. You then pass through two additional pieces of the old armory, the Footman's Armory and the Hall of Champions. You are then right back in the library with the Gallery of Treasures, the Athenaeum, and then the final boss room. The Scarlet Monastery was created simply by taking everything but the Forlorn Cloister off the graveyard and then adding that before the Cathedral. Of course, just like with the Scarlet Halls, every area got a graphical update, and unfortunately, with this revamp, the Corrupted Ashbringer event was removed as well. Since such a small percentage of the player base actually have the blade, and since Renault Morgrain was removed, it actually makes sense not to keep the event around, but it's still a shame. And there you have it, the evolution of the Scarlet Monastery from before the game was released up until what we have today. It is really interesting to be able to track certain assets from the map that was created before the game was released all the way up to what it is today. Scarlet Monastery has basically been chopped up in four pieces, sewn together into four different bodies, only to be chopped up again and sewn together into two different bodies. All while keeping as much as possible from the original parts throughout the process. So what we are looking at here is really the Frankenstein's monster of dungeons. I would like to hear which version you prefer, so please let me know in the comments below. And as usual, like the video and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will be back with more content very soon. Also, before I end the video, some of you have been asking about my treatment and how it's going. And so far, everything is going very well. I am more than halfway through now and hopefully, in a few months, I should be cancer free. So thank you again for all the support, I usually give frequent updates about this on Twitter, so follow me there if you wish. But until next time, take care.